Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to take a look at the Polistes dominula wasp and how their larva spins a very interesting material that we call wasp silk over the tops of their cells when they're getting prepared to pupate into the adult form of the wasp. At the end of the pupation metamorphosis, this is the same material that they chew their way out of when they're ready to come out into the world as adult wasps. The silk that wasps can make is extremely strong and it protects them from the elements. It helps thermoregulate their cell during pupation. It protects them from the extremes in the weather, cold or heat. It protects them from predation by other animals or insects or parasites. And the silk does a great job of keeping them clean, almost sterile conditions inside the cell. Most of the close-up footage we show you today will be from one of the wild nests that we relocated into captivity for the purpose of this sort of study. So kick back and relax. We hope you enjoy learning about how wasps make silk, just like the silkworms of the world and many other insects that go through the whole process of full metamorphosis. In our view, baby wasps can give a silkworm a run for their money any day. So first we'll start with a little history on this nest. This is the one that you may have seen in some of our other videos. The initial footage we got of this nest was all on a cell phone, so it's very low resolution. Uh, the better camera footage came later, but it's fun to look back at the original timeline of this nest. This was a wild nest we had removed and relocated into captivity. The property owner had asked us to remove it from a recycle bin where it was attached to the underside lid of that bin, and we introduced it to a habitat we had set up for other Polistes dominula. We had overwintered from the year before that we had had in habitat here since October of 2021. So we brought this nest into the existing habitat where other Polistes dominula were already residing. We reintroduced the foundress to her nest because initially in the wild you have to separate the wasp from the nest in order to get the nest set up and squared away for a habitat. Here we just did a microscope camera uh, close up on these larvae to check their development and they were just about ready to start making silk caps. They were very mature larvae when we found them. It seemed to be a very healthy and active nest. Uh, the foundress that came with it, the queen, seemed to have already maintained it pretty well in the wild. There was young larvae, there was mature larvae, and there was also some eggs still in the nest on the outer cells, which is typical in the springtime. So this is the next day on May 31st of 22, and you'll notice that the center cell has already been capped off. Overnight, this occurred, so the larvae were absolutely ready right when we had found the nest to start doing their silk caps, so the timing was great to study this process. So here on May 31st, we have one silk cap, but then the one next door to the silk cap, the cell where you see the larva kind of leaning over, was about to begin making its silk cap. So this larva as you'll see here in a moment, starts to sort of gyrate around in its cell. And we realize that behavior is always the beginning of them starting to cap off a cell. So what happens here is there's glands inside the mouth parts of these larvae called the lobule or the labial glands. And those glands produce a gel-like substance. They call it silk dope, this gel inside those glands. And what happens is as these glands produce that gel, the larva will begin to string that gel along the sides and along the top of its cell in these tiny, super fine strands, uh, which are so thin that they're hard to film, but you'll see them here in a moment. And that silk gel, when it hits the air, it immediately solidifies into a very strong fiber. This gel is produced from proteins primarily inside the larva itself. So as this larva started engaging in the capping off process, we went ahead and filmed it. And we filmed the entire process of the larva creating this silk cap. So we're going to show you that process here. And then we'll show you some more footage that was shot more recently here in August of 2022, when the next generation of eggs and larva had come from this nest. And they began doing the same process, and we were able to catch that. We'll show you some more of that high-res footage later. For now, we're still in May of 2022, just sort of catching you up on what this particular larva did. It was remarkable to watch this because of the time involved. This larva was able to do her whole silk cap in a, in a matter of hours. She was done. It went really quickly, all things considered, even though they work one tiny, super fine strand at a time, and they just weave it and weave it and weave it until they have a nice, thick, strong, silk cap over that cell. So it's interesting to see how that process works from the beginning all the way through to the end. 
As you can see throughout this process, the foundress wasp was very protective of the initial larva that was capping off. She was very sort of actively parking her body nearby or on top of even the cells as this work was happening. I feel like that's probably an instinctual thing to make sure that she gets these workers out as soon as possible in one piece so they can help her develop this colony. And as you watch this larva work, it's pretty remarkable that they work by themselves. They get no help from the adult wasps at all during this process, really. It's all coming from the energy produced by this larva itself. And because the larva feed on primarily protein from maluxated insects, as you see the foundress is maluxating a spider here, we would continually give the foundress protein in the form of found insects or mealworms, that kind of thing, later on. But the purpose of that is because the foundress will maluxate that protein just like this and she'll feed it directly to the larva and the larva will then digest that protein and ultimately when they're ready they will use a lot of protein and a lot of energy to create the silk cap to go into pupation to become an adult wasp. So the foundress or the queen obviously she has to work overtime trying to keep up with all these protein eating larvae because she really needs those larvae to survive and, and get them up to the adult stage as soon as possible to grow the colony. And so she is on constant food runs collecting out, if she were out in the wild, this is a captive nest of course, so they have to wait for feedings. But if she was out in the wild, it would be a nonstop effort going back and forth, hunting insects, hunting protein essentially to bring back to this nest to feed every one of those larvae to get them all up to the point where they could then create silk caps and get into pupation and then move on into adulthood and begin taking over the foraging and the nest maintenance duties so that the foundress could then focus on laying eggs, which is her main job once that first generation of workers has been born. So here you see as the larva works on the silk cap, the foundress takes the meatball essentially that she's made from that spider and she begins feeding the other larvae directly through trophallaxis, which is mouth-to-mouth -mouth feeding. And she gives each one of the larvae, as best she can anyway, bits of that spider meat as protein. And she does not attempt to feed the larvae that's spinning the silk cap. Instinctually, they know that once this process begins, it's not interrupted. They no longer feed any larva who has begun the process of weaving a silk cap. No matter how long it takes, they just stop feeding them. So you'll notice she checks on that cell, but then she passes over it and moves on to the next one that's open. And the thing about the feedings that happen this way is that normally this nest would be facing the ground. The larvae hang upside down in the nest and their faces face the ground. So the wasp is normally hanging upside down and she's hanging on with the hooks on her feet to feed her larva face to face. In this lab environment, while we're doing studies on this nest, it's flipped over. So this foundress had to adapt to an upside down nest in a very foreign environment, this, this habitat we try to make comfortable for her, but is completely non-natural as far as the regular uh, life of a wasp is concerned. So she is doing a great job here of rearing this nest despite the incredible massive change we instigated over the last two days since she was hanging upside down in a recycle bin only two days ago and now all of a sudden she's inside a habitat with a whole bunch of other polistes that have been sitting in that same habitat since October since they overwintered and here it is May 22 and she's just trying to acclimate and keep this nest alive at the same time she's doing a great job. Now you'll notice during this process of feeding the other larva that the larva that's weaving its silk cap is still just working hard and basically it gets ignored that larva while she goes about the regular maintenance of that nest they don't have time to deal with those silk caps or treat them extra special you'll see they just get walked over and stepped on and uh, they're kind of just expected to deal with that silk cap despite the chaos of the day-to-day -day activity on the nest and you'll notice if you look carefully the larva on the left the silk cap that's already there that happened last night on the night between the 30th and the 31st of may that larva is still moving occasionally inside its silk cap you can see that every once in a while in this footage from this video throughout the video there is some motion still underneath there they get more still later on but there's some motion that occurs throughout that pupation development so the larva working on the new silk cap to the right, that one's just working steadily throughout this whole process of feeding the rest of the nest. 
and you can see it moving under there, weaving and weaving and weaving, and that silk cap gets thicker and thicker, strand by strand, as it goes along. Ultimately, in a matter of hours, that silk cap is complete. Meanwhile, we just keep the protein coming to the nest in the form of insects, mealworms, spiders, what have you. And the foundress just works and works, maloxating that protein and feeding it to the larva. So it's a constant stream of protein coming in as raw insect meat. The mother maloxates, feeds to the larva. The larva digests it. Then the silk dope is created in the glands of the larva. And the larva then secretes that as it creates the silk cap. This process is so taxing on the larva that sometimes they just sort of slump down in the cell and stop working for a while and they just rest. And when that occurs, they gather their energy up again and then they go back to it and they start working again. And as you see here, after a relatively short amount of time, the silk cap has become quite strong and thick on the top of the cell. Now's a good time to transition to the next couple of days forward in time. It's now June 3rd of 2022. And the third larva from this nest begins spinning another silk cap. And the foundry is still very protective of the larva that are spinning their silk caps right now. She checks in on them often. And she may give them a little trophallaxis, but overall there's no protein being fed to these larvae anymore. Uh, the feedings are done. Uh, they're past that stage now. And once they begin the silk cap weaving process, they're not fed anymore. And most of the silk that you see is on the top of the cell. But what you don't see is down inside the cell, a fair amount of the cell interior is also lined with that same sort of silk. You don't get to see much of that because it happens down where the camera can't see. But uh, you see a little bit of it here where the larva is actually working below the surface of the nest, not on the top at the moment. And you'll see it going back and forth kind of underneath some of the strands it's already made on the top and it touches the wall with its mouth and that's the silk being applied to the inside of that cell. At times the larva has to scooch down so low in the cell that it, it actually almost folds in on itself to reach parts of the lower ends of the cell. You'll see it start that process here in just a second where it begins to just sort of shrink itself down into the lower ends of that cell. And you see its head almost entirely disappears into its own body while it's kind of squeezing itself down in there. So for the rest of this silk cap being completed, we're going to go ahead and put it on high speed for a while. Uh, fast forward and allow you to see the whole process, but in a much shorter period of time. So we'll just hold the voice over for about the next minute or so and we'll catch you at the end of that time period. We'll just drop a little music track in here just so you know when the audio is supposed to be on. regular speed and you can see the silk cap is basically complete and the next day we now have three cells that are complete and ready to go into pupation and that lasted until about June 20th when the first wasp came out of the pupated cell. So here we are jumping ahead in time to June 20th after the pupation has ended for basically three of the cells here that had capped off right around the same time. And by now a fourth cell had capped off as well. You can see that on the left. You can watch some of our other videos to see this process in more detail. However, for now, uh, just be aware that the wasp is coming out of pupation, has to chew around the edges of the silk cap, all the way around the edge of the cell. And from that point it has freedom of motion and it can emerge from the cell. 
We'll skip a bit forward to show you when she starts to emerge. It's a pretty unique thing to see that you don't catch very often. See the antenna begin to come out first as the most sensitive organ, exploring the outside of the cell. And then she fights her way out a little bit. Starts to crawl right out. By instinct, she just starts grooming first, cleaning up her antennas. We'll skip ahead here to where she's finished grooming herself and pulls herself out of the cell. And remember now, instinctually, this would be an upside down arrangement. She'd be, her head would be pointed toward the ground right now. But in this lab environment for study, she's got to pull herself all the way out against gravity to the top of that cell. So it's a little bit more effort than it might have been if gravity was helping her out in nature. But she does it, and she did well. And if you want to see that whole process in more detail, you can take a look at our other videos. For now, we're going to cut it here. We'll jump ahead to where we are now in August of 2022, where there's now been a second generation of eggs laid in those same cells, and they're becoming mature larvae, and they're beginning to weave their own silk caps. This is the same nest with a high-res macro lens. In this footage, it's easier to see how super fine those threads of silk are that she's secreting from her labial glands and how much work it would be if each tiny thread was that small and that fine. And eventually you have to cap off that entire space of the top of that cell plus the interior lining that they're working on. It's a huge amount of work for these larvae. And we found that some of them don't survive the process. You can see here that compared to when the first generation of workers are born, when there are none yet on the nest, there's only the foundress or the queen, the nest is much busier. There's a lot more going on. Here, one of the female workers from the first generation actually hooks the larva in the head with her claws from her feet. And I think that was accidental because she's just working on another cell at the moment. But that poor larva is hooked in the head and can't move anywhere. And it's just stuck until that other wasp kind of lets it go. And this kind of thing is just happening all the time for this generation born when there's a whole lot of activity on the nest. So they're constantly walking around, stomping on the heads of these other little larvae that are working on their silk cap. So the faster these larvae can get their silk cap made, the safer they'll be, not only from predation by outside uh, influence, but also from the other wasps on the nest. It's just a busy place and it can be dangerous because of that. See, despite all the activity, that larva just keeps working and working, trying to get that silk cap built. For its own survival, really, the faster that silk cap gets made, the better. There's a lot of checking of the other larva cells, and there's a lot of instinctual behavior on the part of the wasps that are already born, the workers from the first generation. Uh, they're incentivized to keep poking their heads into the other cells all the time because they're looking for some of the liquid nourishment that the larvae produce that the adult wasps will drink. And so they're constantly on the lookout for that. And they're also just checking the maintenance of the nest itself, building on the nest wherever it needs to be repaired. They're constantly leaving off on foraging runs to go get more wood fiber to build the nest with or to bring back protein for the developing larva or to go nectaring in the flowers to nourish themselves and then come back and do trophallaxis, mouth-to-mouth feeding with the other adult wasps. It's just a constant amount of activity. And you can see here how strong the silk cap has already become, even though it's only been in existence here for a very short period of time. As soon as it hits the air, it becomes quite strong, and the other wasps can even lean on it and hook it with their feet and use it for support as they're walking around. It's that tough already. And there are times, as you can see here, when the activity really calms down on the nest and all the wasps take a break. At times like this, you'll see it almost looks like the foundress is being very attentive to the laboring larva who's building her silk cap. Everything just calms down and she just sort of monitors that one cell where the silk cap is being made. You see in this clip, uh, it almost looks like they start to have a little wasp conversation. She's just sort of talking to it, touching it a little bit with her antenna. We like to project our human behaviors onto animals too much, I believe, in this society. 
uh, we don't let them just be what they are as animals and insects but uh, sometimes it's tough to put aside your humanness when you see footage like this where it's just a mom and her baby face to face kind of gently interacting the foundress just stays perfectly still here as the larva just labors away on the silk cap and it, it does make you wonder what what is going through their mind whatever their mind is however different from ours what is she thinking what is she feeling if anything and does the larva know that the foundress is its mother you can see how the foundress's antenna are just ever so gently touching the outside of that cell they're incredibly sensitive organs, the antenna, and one would assume that she can feel every single little vibration from that larva working on the silk cap, and so she knows exactly what's going on, and she does seem to react to it. It makes you wonder if this is considered stimulating behavior to try to encourage this larva to continue and finish. What is the purpose of that communication? things we'll probably never know. In the end, there's a lot of guesswork in the research field just trying to make some sense of the behaviors that we observe and document. And I think a lot of times the sense we try to make comes from a very human perspective and we could be way off the mark. And despite all that, researchers have done amazing things in labs and in the field figuring out how and why the animal world, the insect world, operates the way it does. So it's never a wasted effort to attempt to figure these things out because sometimes they're very successful and they can understand a lot through basic observation and testing and lab work and field work. There's a research team that just recently uncovered some very fascinating information about the components in the silk that these larvae will weave in certain paper wafts in Asia they found out that the silk itself is photoreactive. In fact, when they shine UV light on it in certain wavelengths, it lights up like a black light poster, an incredible green glow, and some of them are more of a yellow-orange glow. Very fascinating, and they're still trying to figure out why exactly is that happening, because most of these wasps are not even active at night, and they're trying to figure out what benefit that would have in the wild and how that happens and why. I think anything any of us can do to push research forward and to add knowledge and information to that stream of human understanding of the world and nature around us, it's always a worthy effort. Bottom line is the more we know about this world around us, the better we can preserve it for the future. Because there's absolutely no guarantees that any of this is gonna take care of itself. It's going to take all of us. I know for most of us, we'd like to be able to look our children in the eye and say, hey, we did what we could. We really did. We did our best to make this world available to you and your generation and all of you and following generations deserve that same basic diligence and respect from us. The way things look these days, it's kind of impossible to imagine any future world that isn't going to take a whole lot of work to preserve. So let's make like a wasp larva and put in the work to make sure we build ourselves an environment we can all survive in. Let us know in the comments if you've ever seen larva inside a wasp nest. Let us know if you've ever seen a pupating larva make a silk cap. Keep an eye out underneath the eaves of buildings you're under this summer. As we go into fall, maybe you're going to see a lot more of these than you ever noticed before. It's fun when you start paying attention. Start with what's right around you. What's in your front yard, your backyard your city block, wherever you live, there's always something. There's something you didn't notice before. There's something you haven't paid attention to. 
It's there and it's waiting for you. Something that will expand your awareness and your knowledge. Look for that. See what you can find today. That brings this episode to a close. We appreciate all of you being here with us. It really does mean a lot to us that you've been able to support our channel. You come and visit. You spend some time with us. You like. You subscribe. We know you're there. And we appreciate every one of you. Now let's watch this little larva as we close out today. Pushing and expanding and working. Living. Surviving. <laughs>